We now introduce two fundamental definitions. First, the definition of a normal good, which is that when income goes up, consumption of the good goes up. And the next, the definition of an inferior good, when income goes up, consumption of the good goes down. You can flip these definitions around. The fundamental property of a normal good definition is that income and consumption goes in the same direction. In other words, if income were to go down, consumption would go down. An inferior good, the fundamental property is that income and consumption move in opposite directions. So if income goes down, consumption of the good would go up. So opposite directions, income and consumption, it's an inferior good. Same direction, it's a normal good. So what implications these have for angle curves? If you have a normal good, call it x, and we draw the angle curve. When income goes up, consumption is supposed to go up, and therefore a normal good will have a positively sloped angle curve. An inferior good, again, x versus income, when income goes up, consumption of the good is supposed to go down. So this generates a negative slope that when income goes up, consumption of the good goes down. Next I want to discuss this claim which I've typed in the upper right hand corner which is that it's not possible for all goods to be inferior. Let's give an example. Suppose that at initial income level, let's say 100, you were consuming 10 units of x and 5 units of y. Now income goes up to 200. If x were inferior, then the new consumption of x would be below 10, let's say 8. If y were inferior, then the new consumption of y would be below 5, let's say 3. Let me explain why this behavior doesn't make any sense. So here's the original budget constraint corresponding to an income of 100. And we have x equals 10 and y equals 5. Then we have a new budget constraint corresponding to an income of 200 and x has gone down to 8 which is here and y has gone down to 3 which is here and so the new point is here. The reason why this doesn't make any sense is because you could have afforded the new point even when your income was just $100. It was in the original budget constraint. So if the new point is is the new point, namely eight comma three, was really better than the original point, namely ten comma five, then why didn't you buy eight comma three in the first place? You could have afforded it. So this is an inconsistency in behavior. That when your income is a hundred, you bought ten five. You could have bought eight three, but you didn't. So economists would say it's it's uh, reveal uh, ten five is revealed preferred to eight three because your behavior reveals that you must have preferred ten five to eight three because you were able to consume both of them and you chose to consume ten five instead of eight three. Now, when your income goes up to two hundred, your preferences switch. In other words, you can still consume both ten five and eight three, but now you chose eight three. That's an inconsistency. It means that preferences have changed, and that violates the basic neoclassical assumptions that we're using. That doesn't mean that in reality those de preferences never change. It just means that in our neoclassical economic theory, at least at this point, preferences don't change. And therefore you, this, this inconsistency can't happen. It's pretty clear that even though I've only used x and y, that is two goods, that you can construct a similar proof for an arbitrary number of goods. And that completes the the proof of this claim that it's not possible for all goods to be inferior. You can have almost all goods being inferior, but you can't have all goods being inferior. Finally, let's investigate normal and inferior goods in the context of of the uh, x and y plane. 
So we have initial budget constraints, initial positions. In the first example, I want to graph x being normal and y being normal. And if the initial position is here, and I'm going to study an increase in income. Now, you should also understand what happens when there's a decrease in income, but I'm just going to do an increase in income here. An increase in income with x being normal means that the new position has to have more x. And an increase in income with y being normal means a new position has to have more y. And therefore, we need to be to the right of this line and above this line. So the new optimal point needs to be between these two open circles. I can draw an indifference curve that satisfies that criterion in this way. And then the new point would be here. And indeed, you do have now more x and more y corresponding to the increase in income. The sex e second example, I'm going to assume that x is inferior and y is normal. Of course, I'm not going to have an example with both of them being inferior because I already proved it's not possible for all goods to be inferior. But here I got one of the goods, just one of the goods to be inferior, the other one is normal. Again, I'm going to suppose you have an increase in income. So the initial value of x is here. I want x to be inferior, which means that when income increases, as it does here, I want the consumption of x to fall. So I have to be to the left of this point. The initial consumption of y is here. And because I want y to be normal, when income increases, as it does in this example, the consumption of y goes up. So the consumption of y has to, has to rise. So I need to be above the, the horizontal line I just drew and to the left of the vertical line. That means I need to be between these two open circles in the budget constraint. My income's gone up, so my utility is going to go up. So I can't be to the left of this circle because that would give rise to a lower level of utility than originally, and when your income goes up, your utility doesn't go down. Furthermore, or reflective of that, I would have some kind of, you know, if, if I were to, to make a mistake and draw an indifference curve like that, that indifference curve would cross the first indifference curve I drew. So that's a mistake, and I'm going to erase that. So I need to be between the two points that I have drawn open circles in. It's a little tricky to draw, but it's possible. like that. So the optimal place, the tangent point, would be here. And that satisfies the condition that you're above the original position. The original position, I'll make it darker, is here. And you're to the left of the original position. So you've graphed x being inferior and y being normal.